I was a communist for the FBI. Starring Dana Andrews and an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. From the actual records and authentic experiences of Matt Savetic come many of the incidents in this unusual story. Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Savetic, who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. Matt Savetic. You can read that name in the official reports of the FBI. Nine years' worth of reports of communist conspiracy against the United States. Lifelong friends spit the word commie at you, and sometimes you wonder if it's worth it. This is one of the stories that answers your question. In a moment, listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Savetic, Undercover Man. Andrews as Matt Savetic, Undercover Man. This story from the confidential file is marked Red Clouds on the Good Earth. It had been a long, hot summer with the usual news headlines, hottest day since 1896. On this particular night, I was in my small hotel room typing a report to the FBI. The window was shut tight. You never knew when the party might have planted someone close by. Even the sound of a typewriter could arouse suspicions. Comrade Savetic might have to explain. It was my cell chief, Comrade Beliski. Comrade Svetik, you will report to the dancing school at 8 o'clock. Tonight? Look, I'm beat. I was this out... This is a special meeting. Beliski, I've pounded the sidewalk from one end of town to the other, collecting dues all day. I tell you, I'm all in. Comrade Svetik, I suggest you read Comrade Willett's excellent article on personal emotions in this week's issue of Political Activities. The meeting is at 8 o'clock. Be there. Drop dead. Now, that's the first happy thought I've had all day. Comrades, we have received special orders. More infiltration must be done in the rural districts. We must build the party rapidly and increasingly among small farmers and agricultural workers. And most important, we must recruit the youth and assure them that the Communist Party of the United States will fight their great enemy, the monopolists. Until they're beaten by the I listened to Beliski with work. my third ear now, while I looked around Madame know, Irina's dancing school. Something new in Russian ballet, huh? But, like the rest of them, I turned my attention back to Beliski as he snapped his orders. I call your attention to this map. It is in the northern section of the state. There are many small farmers of foreign extraction. Comrades have already been placed on some of these farms as farm hands. Up here is Valley Center, where the annual harvest festival will be held in ten days. This is our focal point of operation. Comrades Johnson, Kardoff, and uh, Sonia Danachek. Yes, you will report to Comrade Storm for instructions. Comrade Svedek. Yes, Comrade Beliski. You will work directly with me. Please wait. Now, all of you, we must start recruiting among the farmers immediately. Any names of potential members you can get... Please turn in as quickly as possible. That is all. <laughs> Comrade Svetik, let me show you on the map the territory you are to cover. You will start from here, Lindenville, and work your way right up through to Valley Center. I see. You'll start by planting the idea of organized youth clubs where special study can be given to specific problems. 
distribute copies of our magazine political activities, perhaps even solicit articles from the young people. What happens at Valley Center? At the Harvest Festival, we will contribute to the entertainment by showing motion pictures. Our propaganda films, of course. Our educational films. I'll be there to act as narrator and drive home strategic facts in the film. Uh, any questions, Vedic? Yes. What's my cover-up for being there? We've secured a job for you as a traveling salesman for a farm supply and implement house. A comrade arranged it. This will bring you into contact with the farmers. Oh, incidentally, there's a farmer at Valley Center, Mark Pawalski. His son is quite a leader among the young people. Cultivate this boy. Try and stop at Pawalski's house if you can. It'll be convenient. Any further questions? No, I guess not. Very well. Pick up your sample case first thing in the morning and leave. Good night, comrade. Good night. Oh, Comrade Beliski. Hmm? Who pays for transportation? <laughs> Why, your new firm, the Farmer Supply House. They always furnish cars for their salesmen. <laughs> A good joke on their reactionary boss. <laughs> someone should only know, eh? <laughs> yeah, someone should only know. <laughs> <laughs> but you won't be traveling alone. Why not? Why should you? Well, there's no reason except that I suppose I'm what you might call a lone wolf. Yes, I've noticed that. And I don't like it. May I remind you that even wolves fight in collective packs? I'm going with you, also as a salesman. Any objection? No, 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 it'll be a pleasure. We'll cover the whole thing like a rug. Right down to Farmer Pawalski. Good night, comrade. Stevens? Yes, Fuddick? I'm phoning from a drugstore. I just left the meeting. What's up? Infiltration of the farmers. I'm leaving on a trip. What's the pitch? Common literature, propaganda movies, you know, usual thing. At least that's what they say. But I've got a hunch there's more I haven't been told about because... Well, so long, honey. I didn't get a chance to tell the FBI agent my destination because a glance over my shoulder had told me that Comrade Maliski was moving close to the phone booth. Oh, hello, Beliski. Vedic, I was just going to phone you. <laughs> Isn't it a small world? What about? I thought we'd plan our route tonight so we can get an early start in the morning. Tonight? Well, as a matter of fact, I, I just made a date. A very red-headed date. But of course I can't break it. Why break it? Maybe she has a friend for me. Comrade Beliski. Personal pleasures before party business? May I remind you of Comrade Willett's excellent article on personal emotions in this week's issue of Political Activities? Oh, uh, of course, of course. Uh, you won't mention this. No, but what's that kind of talk, Beliski? Others are not so generous. Now, let's get something to eat and talk over our plans. I knew Beliski's suggestion about a double date was an act. He was the party's best stool pigeon and responsible for at least two deaths, or pardon me, suicides, in the Communist Party. Yes, Beliski was very good at ferreting out traitors, and I had a terrible hunch that he wasn't coming with me just because he liked my company. Lindenville, communist clouds gathering over a peaceful community. Communist seeds of agitation had been dropped into rich American soil by the party members who had been working on the farms. Now it was time for the killing. Comrade Beliski was in his glory as he made like little Joe and addressed groups of farmers, kids mostly, at secret meeting places. It is in the hands of you young people, the farmers of tomorrow, to decide the fate of the soil. Even now, the capitalists are speeding up a drive toward war. <laughs> West Falls. You can join in the great strengthening of the world peace forces, which will weaken the present world capitalist system and till your soil in peace and plenty, or stand idly by and let them take away your plow and hand you a gun. Is that what you want? No! We don't want to...
I met party workers I'd never known about. My list of names was growing. I'd have a pretty big report for the FBI when I got back. Correction, please, if I got back. With Comrade Beliski sticking to me like a mustard plaster, I still hadn't found a safe moment to make contact with the FBI. Valley Center was our next stop, and I kept wondering what would happen there. How many more miles to Valley Center, Matt? About 32. We did all right with those kids in Jasonville, didn't we? Yeah, we did great. They ate it up. Uh, that angle I have about being driven into war is pretty good. Every word a pearl, comrade. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, say, Beliski, about this plan to show propaganda movies at Valley Center. Sounds kind of weak to me. I mean, we got to dream up something stronger. We have. Oh? What gives? Well, during the movie, at a given signal, some of our party members planted in the audience will rise in protest and demand that we take the picture off. That will be our chance to jump up and demand our rights as Americans to see and hear for ourselves. Then... The riot. Violence, arrests, and new recruits who sympathize will join our party. Exactly. It'll work. It always does. Hey, slow down. We're no good to the party dead. I'm just trying to make Valley Center before dark. You're not scared, are you? I was scared plenty. This riot act was a small detail Beliski hadn't told me. Why? Just how far didn't he trust me? More than ever, I'd have to watch my step. But this planned violence at Valley Center, I knew what could happen. I'd seen it done before. Somehow, somewhere, I had to lose Beliski long enough to make contact with the FBI. <laughs> to Dana Andrews, starring as Matt Savetic, and I was a communist for the FBI, and the second act of our story. When we reached Valley Center, we could feel the excitement in the air over the coming festival. We headed straight for the general store, displayed our samples, and established our excuse for being in town. Luck was with us, if you can call it luck. Because Mark Powalski was in the store, too. It didn't take much effort to maneuver an invitation to stay at the Powalski farm. There was just one thing wrong. Comrade Beliski declared himself in on the invitation, and the odds against my losing him long enough to make that phone call to the FBI were getting too big for comfort. Well, Mr. Powalski, you're very kind to invite us to stay here at your farm for the festival. I hope it isn't too much trouble. Trouble? <laughs> of course not. When I meet a man named Savetic at the general store, whose people come from Slovenia, my own country, I say, this man and his friend stops only at Polvalski farm. And tonight my daughter Paula cooks for us only old-style dishes. <laughs> you like that, eh? Mm, yeah, that's, that's great. <laughs> uh, Mr. Polvalski, yeah. I have to make a long-distance call. I'll pay for it. Sure, sure. The phone is in the kitchen. Thanks a lot. Oh, here's your friend, Mr. Beliski, back with our Johnny. I must go tell Paula to make supper. You know something, Mr. Beliski? I never thought of it like that. <laughs> Pop, Mr. Beliski's been giving me some figures on the consumer's market. So? Oh, uh, Mr. Savetic, you want to make long-distance call now? <laughs> no, I'll do it later. There is Paula. Paula! Paula! Who are you going to phone in long-distance, Beliski? I, I was just going to report that we'd reached here. Report our location, you know. No, I don't know, since I'm in charge. Hey, Pop, come here a minute, will you? I want to ask you a question. Uh, a question? Yes. Did you ever think of the tremendous cost of farm produce to the consumer? The profits all along the line, but the farm only grosses a few pennies on them. So? So what kind of a deal is that? Johnny, you don't understand. There are many problems before the consumer gets the product. Transportation, canning, labor costs, advertising. This is big business. I wouldn't want to change places. Why? 
What's so great about being a small farmer all your life? That, Mr. Belisky, is something only a farmer could understand. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Pawalski, I, I didn't I mean... know, I know. It's only too much talk I hear lately about the profits. It is dangerous. I'd better go to the barn now. Oh, hi, Pop. What's your hurry? Oh, wait, Pop. I'll go with you. Paula, we got company. Oh, Mr. Spenning, this is my sister, Paula. Someone should have prepared me for Paula. About shoulder height, my shoulder, that is. Blue eyes and blonde hair that proved nature was right once in a while. Comrade Belisky made some inane, smirking remark about the traveling salesman and the farmer's daughter... And I made an inner non-proletariat prayer that the Powalski kids would say no thank you to the particular brand of poison we were selling. Oh, I guess we're all here, Mr. Savetic. Okay. Hey, kids. Huh? Kids, this is Mr. Savetic and Mr. Belisky. They wanted to meet you, and I think you ought to hear what they have to say. Uh, Johnny, you'd better close the barn door. Let's keep this private, okay? Oh, sure, Mr. Bullock. Try to keep Scott, and then I'll take over. Okay, but go easy. You never know about these kids. Uh, Mr. Bolisky and I have been traveling around the country, and we've seen a lot of things that concern the small farmer. Like what, Mr. Savetti? Well, for example... What would you say is the biggest problem on your farm? Well, that's easy. The cost of irrigation. Well, what can we do about that? Alone, nothing. But the monopolists who are squeezing the agricultural workers to the wall with their ever-increasing high rates can be beaten by the combined efforts of all the workers, both industrial and agricultural. Industrial? How could the factory worker fit into our picture? I don't understand. I'll answer that one, Paula. Right now, workers all over the country are standing by, ready to strike if necessary, to bring about better conditions for the American farm. <laughs> Don't ever mention the word strike to Pa. He says anyone who strikes is a bunch of commies. And commies, as he calls them, have horns. But what does he know about the Communist Party of the United States? Or for that matter, what do you know about it? Well, just what Pa says about it. Or oh, what we read in the papers. Only hearsay, and yet you judge it. Is this the American way? Do you read in the papers that the drive to war is impoverishing the workers and farmers of this country? Do they tell you that the young farmer of tomorrow... Wait a minute. I think I heard a car. Why must this meeting be so secret? Because people brand the truth communism. And we bring you the truth. Shh, quiet, Belisky. Oh, Dr. O'Neill, come on in. Oh, uh, you are having a club meeting. Uh, don't let me interrupt. I've been visiting a patient down the road, and I'm afraid my poor old car is thirsty again. <laughs> that radiator. I'll get some water. No, no, I can find my way to the pump myself. Thank you, Johnny. But uh, I don't think I know these gentlemen. I'm Matt Savetic, Dr. O'Neill. This is Mr. Belisky. We were just passing through. I see. And I trust you find our young people interesting. Uh, but please, don't let me interrupt. I can get the water myself. I knew Dr. O'Neill was suspicious of us. Belisky knew it, too. That's why he gave me the high sign to follow the doctor outside, which was just what I wanted. I had a hunch. It was a long shot, but it might work. Well, Dr. O'Neill? I'm over here at the pump. May I give you a hand? Oh, thank you, but I have enough water now. Then I'll carry the pail over to your car. All right. Thank you, Mr. Spetik. Uh, we're very proud of Johnny Pawalski and the other boys and girls. They've done some good, progressive work on their farms. Yes, sir. Fine kids. Uh, doctor? And I know that nothing will ever change them. I like to believe that of all our young Americans. So do I, Doctor. So do I. I'm glad to hear you say that, Mrs. Fettick. Oh, well, here's my car. Let me put the water in for you. Uh, careful of that radiator cap. It uh, gets very hot. Yeah, don't worry. Leaky radiators are my specialty. <laughs> I never had a car yet that didn't have one. There we go. You should have the thing fixed. I know. But there are so many more things these days that need to be fixed. 
My little car seems unimportant. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Fettick. Oh, Dr. O'Neill, I've got a favor to ask you. Uh, of course. What is it? Will you make a long-distance call for me? But Mr. Povalski has a telephone. Uh, why well, I, I can't explain. Well, suppose I say, trust me, doctor. I'll make your call, Mr. Spedick. Thank you. Here, I'll write it down for you. This is the number. The city. That's for Stevens. Tell him Sovetic must have more samples sent to Valley Center before tomorrow night. Say it's a hot line. He'll understand. Very well. Oh, and oh, here's some money to cover the phone call. Please take it. Thank you. I will. My labor is skilled, but not highly paid. Goodbye, Mr. Spedick. Bye. <laughs> The big night, our calling contest, square dancing, a midway with games and prizes. For a brief moment, I was just a guy out with a girl, Paula, having a ball at the country fair. Test your strength, mister. Ring the bell and win a baby doll for your girl. <laughs> okay. I didn't know how much strength I'd need to carry me through the night and to take me away when it was over because pretty girls and nice people were not in the cards for Matt Svedek. Not now. There'd be rioting in the movie tent soon and hysteria. I'd had no contact from the FBI and it seemed that I was strictly on my own. propaganda movie was on the screen and Baliski was narrating. Here are the farms of the present under the Soviet Union. See the fields of plenty. I looked around the audience. I knew which of the party members scattered around were ready to start a protest against the film. That would be the signal for Baliski and the rest of us to give the pitch that this was proof that Americans were no longer free to see the truth. And I still didn't know if Dr. O'Neill got the call through to Stephen. I could only hope. About ten minutes more and the fireworks would start. I heard the tenseness creep into Baliski's voice. Under the Soviet. And here, my friends, are actual pictures of just a few of the many small farms all over the United States that are being forced out of existence by capitalist exploitation. Suddenly, in the middle of Baliski's narration, something happened. Someone had started a riot, all right, but they weren't Communist Party members. What happened in there? Who tipped off the cops? How should I know? Answer me, Svetik. Who tipped off the cops? Well, I don't know. You don't think I had it? I never trusted you. You did it. You're crazy. Hey, get your hands off me. Answer me. Who tipped off the cops? I'll tell you who tipped off the cops. Huh? I did. You, Johnny? Yes, me. I should have let him beat your head off, Mr. Svetik, because you got it coming to you. You must think the kids around here are a bunch of jerks. Well, we're not. You called it yourself last night when you said we were the farmers of tomorrow. For your information, Charm, we intend to defend that future. Come on, Svetik, let's go. What happened just now? The fight between us, you won't report it. No, I won't. You'll, you'll have enough explaining to do about how your plans got fouled up. The party won't like this. I know, I know. You'll back me up. I'd like nothing better. Look, you better go back and see how many arrests they made. I'll go get the car. All right. I'll meet you on Main Street. Mr. Sledek! Mr. Sledek! I've been trying to find you. Oh, hello, Dr. O'Neill. I'm very sorry, but I couldn't get your call through. Mr. Stevens was out of town. I've been wanting to return your money. Here you are. Oh, thanks, Doctor. 
Don't worry about the call. It didn't matter after all. Uh, my car is close by. May I give you a lift? No. Oh, thanks a lot. But I'll, I'll go on by myself. Just as you say. You take one last deep breath of the fresh country air. The earth feels good beneath your feet. The good earth. You look back at Valley Center and wish you could chew the fat with Johnny or visit with Mr. Powalski or walk under the stars with Paula. But forget it. You're an undercover man. You're a communist for the FBI. You walk alone. will return in just a moment. This is Dana Andrews with a word about the story you've just heard. In this story, as in all others, names, dates, and places are fictitious to protect innocent persons. Many of these stories are based on incidents in the life of Matt Savetic, who worked undercover for the FBI. Next week, another fantastic adventure. Join us, won't you?